Hello class, my name is Nancy Chan. So instead of doing it on an academic topic, I have decided I want to do my mini presentation on something that I'm familiar with, and that is the science of baking. So I've been baking for many years, and I've been picking up on some tricks on how to bake more consistently and also getting a desirable result for my baked good. So I'm hoping that this lecture will give you some insight to the science of baking. Let's go over the goals and objective for this lecture. So the goal of this lecture is to give students some basic understanding how science works in baking. And you can get an idea why bake good taste a specific texture. It can also help you troubleshoot if you're having any difficulty with your baking. So here's a couple of things that students will learn from this lecture. One, students will be able to learn basic science interaction in common baking ingredients. Two, students will learn about different use of different baking tools. Three, students will be able to apply different techniques to obtain desired texture and baked goods. Four, students will be able to achieve a consistent desirable results in their baked goods. So one thing that's important to know is that baking is a science. Baking is chemistry and physics, just like in any science lab. If you follow this step precisely, you should be able to get, this, get the same results every single time. So if you have ever wondered why your cookies or cakes are not turning out, it's turning out different time every single time, that is because you're not following the step precisely. While it is very easy to follow a recipe and measuring out the amount, the technique in baking is also very important and that can create different results in your texture and in your, in your baked goods. So, ingredients are usually divided into two types. There are the dry and the wet ingredients. And here's a list of the most common ingredients. Um, the variation depending on what kind of baked goods that you're making, and it may vary a little bit. So, in the next slides, we will be going over how these specific ingredients plays a role. Um, so some of the common wet ingredients include butter, sugar, vanilla, extract, and egg. Common dry ingredient includes flour, salt, and some kind of leavening agents, agents including baking powder or soda. I just also want to point out something interesting is that adult sugar and butters are solids, but they're considered as wet ingredient, and they provide the basic foundation to the texture of your baked goods. So let's talk about how techniques plays a role in the science of baking. Creaming sugar and butter is basically mixing butter and sugar together. However, when you're using the right tool, the sugar crystal will cut into the butter and the butter will form a layer around the air pocket, making the mixture lighter and fluffier. You will notice the longer you cream your sugar and butter, the mixture will turn into a lighter yellow color. Next is adding the egg. Egg serves a few purposes in baked goods. First, the protein in the egg will form a layer around the butter cover air bubble, preventing it from collapsing while, while baking in the oven. In addition, egg, the yellow color from the yolk give your good give your baked goods that nice yellow color, that nice yellow brown color in your baked goods. Next part is folding the flour. Folding flour is a very important part in, in baked goods. Folding the flour gives your baked goods structure through formation of gluten. As you're mixing the dough, gluten will form an elastic network around the air bubbles that hold its shape. Depending on what you're making, you might not want to overbeat your flour mixture. For example, if you over mix a cake, you're going to get a very dense cake. If you're making a heavy, dense pound cake, this might not be so much of an issue. However, if you're making an airy chiffon cake, you definitely do not want to inflate all the air bubbles that you just beat into your egg white. Whereas in bread making, you do want that high formation of gluten, which gives you that chewy texture in your bread. Cookies, on the other hand, are somewhere in the middle, where you don't want to 
be over careful with it and you also do not want to be over mixing it at the same time however depending on your own personal taste you can also fold the mixture a little bit more which will give that crunchier bite in the cookie or if you want if you're more into that soft chewier cookie then you want to stop as soon as your ingredients are incor incorporated evenly Heating and temperature. So heating will cause your leavening agents such as baking powder or baking soda to release carbon dioxide, which allows your butter air bubble to expand and give you that chewy texture while the gluten is holding the everything together. So your baked good does not collapse in the oven. Lastly, browning is formed through either caramelization of the sugar or is through the breaking down the amino acid and the protein, which should give you that nice color in the baked goods. So let's talk about common tools in baked goods. So first we have the sifter. Sifter allows your dry ingredients to blend evenly and also get rid of any clumps in your dry ingredient and allow your baked goods to have a good and nice smooth texture. You don't want to have any lumps in your cake or in your cookies. Next is a ham whisk. Here is a picture of a ham whisk. Ham whisks are designed specifically to look like a balloon, a wire balloon. So it allows the whisk to beat in any air into the butter and sugar mixture. This process will also make your, your baked goods to be fluffier and lighter. Next, we're going to talk about silicone spatula. So silicone spatula is mostly for mixing wet and dry ingredients. It's, re it's not recommended to cream butter and sugar together because it does not have the same effect as a hand whisk beating the air in because it's flat. Vice versa, we don't try, we don't recommend trying using a whisk to mix the wet and the dry ingredient together because what you're going to do is that you're actually going to end up bursting the air bubble that you just worked so hard in into beating and creating. So a silicone spatula is usually used after you already cream the butter and sugar when, when you're mixing the dry and the wet ingredient together. Next is an Electra handheld mixer. Electra handheld mixer is a lot easier on the hand. Um, it also comes with attachment which allows you to beat your air in and save energy, where in a manual hand whisk, you had to do a lot of beating by hand. It's an alternative to a lot of manual work that to, you know, to using a handheld whisk. Last common tool we'll be going over is a stand mixer. Obviously a stand mixer is a lot more convenient uh, but they're usually a lot more expensive. Uh, stand mixer usually comes with three common pedal attachments, a dough whisk, a flat beater, and a balloon whisk. A flat beater resembles a silicone spatula, and a balloon whisk does the same thing, just like a hand whisk, except it's automatic, or a handheld electric mixer. A dough whisk, it's a little bit different. A dough whisk is designed to whip up dough, uh, bread dough, and it doesn't look a lot like a hook because bread dough usually have a highest amount of gluten content. A dough whisk prevents that dough from sticking so easily. So when you're making bread, a lot of times you're actually hand kneading the dough, and a dough whisk will actually replace that hand mixing, and you can, uh, instead of kneading by hand, a dough whisk would do the same uh, similar uh, movement, just like a, you're, as you're kneading the dough. Now that you have learned a little bit about science of baking, let's put your knowledge into practice. So I have included my recipe for sugar cookie. So I chose sugar cookie recipe because it's one of the simplest uh, recipe to bake and it has the most common uh, dry and wet ingredients. 
Uh, just like in a chemistry lab, you will measure it out ingredients in grams. Baking is a very precise process, just like we just we discussed earlier. And typically, I would recommend people to have a scale at home, just like you would do in the chemistry lab. However, I understand that everyone have a scale at home, so I I also included a cup measurement, but it is not the most precise way of measuring. So just like we discussed earlier. We are going to start the recipe by measuring out all the ingredients. We're going to sift and combine them and set them aside. Then we will cream, and the, cream the sugar and the butter together. You will know your sugar and butter mixture is ready when the mixture has turned into a light yellow color. Then you will mix in the egg and the vanilla extra until it's incorporated. The, the next part is very important. You also want to slowly fold into your dry ingredient, ingredient into your wet ingredient. Do not over mix. Fold gently with your spatula just until you do not see any dry flour in the dough. Chill the dough for 30 minutes to one hour because the dough will be too soft to form shape because your butter is extremely soft at this time. It is easier to work with your dough once it's a little bit more firm. You can roll into any shape you can use a cookie cutter or you can just make them into round shape, however you like. Preheat your oven at 350 degrees. Then you're going to bake your cookies at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 8 to 10 minutes until golden brown. And that's it for my mini lecture. And please share your results and your thoughts. And I really want to know, did this lecture help you make better baked goods? How is this different from your usual baking? And I would love to hear more to see if this lecture was helpful.